Hi, this is Alicia at The Honey Company, and we have made a lot of candles today, and we thought we'd unmold them and show you what each one looks like. So if you're in the market for buying your own candle molds, then these can give you an idea of what's out there. We have a tradition to have an annual candle party on December 21st, that's winter solstice, and um, it's the darkest day of the year, so we like to make light in the darkness, make some candles. And um, we've been doing this party for about 20 years. We get a bunch of friends together and we put out all the wax and we make a bunch of candles. Here is the setup for our candle party. We had three stations and it worked out pretty well. In this station, which is just like this Ikea desk, we put all the molds. And then in this area, we had the wick and the hot glue gun and pins elastics this is where people would set up their molds and get ready to pour and then over here we had this really messy now pouring station so we have a couple hot plates and then the pans of different colored wax this one's filled with light colored wax like yellow and that one's a darker wax so that happened last night and now this morning i um, melted the wax again and i filled all of our candle molds i'll unmold them so you can see what they look like this is the first one we're going to unmold this is a tree and so this mold is unique because it has two halves um, and the trick about this mold is that it can leak out the top so you have to use a lot of extra elastics on it especially there we've had a couple leakers or i guess you could hot glue it too but that's a trick that we have with this um, and then also since it's shaped like this and it would need to cool like that upside down and um, we use a box and we just cut a hole in the box like this so that it can sit in there as it's cooling and then be upright and not fall over. Okay, so for this one, see, so unmold it. It is just this really pretty little tree. We got some tags of wax that we just pick off and then we put those in back in the pot. So this is the first one that came from this mini tree mold. So, Unmold that. This one's really easy to get out because it comes apart in half like that. And these have, you know, little plugs that line up with holes on this side so you get an exact match each time. But see, there's some gaps there, so the rubber bands help hold it really securely in place. Okay, these are the two trees. Okay, I unmolded this tree mold off camera. This is what it looks like. It's a big one. It's nice and pretty. Okay, the next one we're gonna unmold is, this is um, called the Bee on the Flower, and this is a polyurethane mold. So it's one piece, but it has four slits in it to make it easier to get the mold out. I'm gonna pull out this pin. This one's easy to pull out. Sometimes you have to use pliers. Nope, I just pulled the head right off the pin. So we're gonna grab our handy dandy pliers and just pull that out. And that held the wick so it was centered in this candle. And then move the elastic. And then we've got some wax where I spilled a little. We'll save that and I'll put that back in the pot. So for this one, we're gonna take two people. Do you wanna come up and help me? Unless you, okay, so we'll pull it like, pull it out like that. And then the wick sometimes stays strong in there. But this one is a bee on a flower. This is one of our favorites. This one floats if you put it in a bowl of water. Okay, and then that's what it looks like from the side. Okay, the next one we're gonna unmold is this floating rose candle. I'm nervous because it's, yep, okay, perfect. So this one, the floating rose looks like this. And again, if you put it in a bowl of water, it will float. These are some molds that I got new last year and they're silicone molds, so they're a little bit more flexible than the polyurethane. We'll remove the pin. And this one, this mold is really flexible, so it didn't need any elastic. You just kind of flip it and pull out the rose. So this one also floats. This one is a little peony. This one's my favorite one. It's really pretty. So Again, there's no elastics. This one is really flexible. So, just open it like so, pull out the wick, and we have a peony. This one is nice because it, if it's loose, it just pulls right out. So, 
So this is this one. All right, that's the last of the floating candles. Okay, the next one we're going to unmold. This is a cylinder candle. And um, a funny story about this one is it used to be really long, but it kind of broke in half. So we just keep using it, but it's just now a shorter cylinder candle. So this one, we just pull it straight out and that's what this one looks like. Okay, I love to do this in a set of three different candles with that um, cylinder one that we just showed as one of them and this hexagon one as another. So we'll remove the pin and then this one's pretty easy to get out too. It's really pretty because it's a tapered candle and it's hexagon shaped. The third one in that set I like to do is um, a spiral candle like this. So we'll pull out the pin and then take out. This one does have elastics because of the shape of it. It's not straight to come out. So we have slits down the sides. So for this one, see we have like this and then we, oh, you know, I did a little hot glue on the end of that because our mold is getting a little tired. So hang on a second. Okay, so now we can just pull that one right out. So I'll also show you the set of three all together. They're really pretty. So I like these three together because it has a bunch of different texture and shape and length and they make kind of a fun set. With the set of three candles, I have these jars here so I can stick the candle mold in it. I could do that, but then, you know, somebody at the party or me could just tip it over pretty easily. So I put it in the jar to kind of make sure it doesn't fall over while it's cooling. All right, so we're gonna unmold this one, which is a candle with like, which has like leaves on the side. It's really pretty. This is the first time I've made this candle. It's a little too warm still, probably for me to take it out, but it was really easy to remove because this mold is really flexible. Another set that's really popular at our candle party is a nativity set. And what I'll do is just unmold all of these and then I'll show um, the whole set together. It's gonna come completely off. There we go. All right, so we got Mary. Uh oh. There's the wise men. Okay. There's this guy. And oh look, a shepherd. Oh, the angel cut in half. That's okay, we still have to get her out. Okay, here's the angel. <laughs> if you pour one continuous pour, then the wax won't have time to cool inside the mold and make a seam, and uh, you'll be more likely to get it out in one piece. Okay, here he is. That's fine. Or is it Joseph? Okay, the other wise man. If the wax is too hot when you pour it in the mold, It'll stick to your mold, and it's harder to release it, and it'll also shorten the life of your mold. Yeah. So you want the wax temperature. Just barely above melted. Okay, so here's our little lamb. We like to do the people in light wax and then the animals in dark wax. Okay, that one's probably not ready. Is it ready? Okay, this one's the hardest one to get out because it has horns and ears. And this time it has all of its parts. And is this one Joseph? Do you think he'll have a chin? <laughs> There's a bubble spot where Joseph can get. Okay, and our molds have been used so many times. Oh, look, does he have a chin? Yep, I'll try. Here is the donkey. We just kind of peel it back like this. And then this one, the tricky part is its ears. Oh, no, only one ear. Okay, now it's gonna be a trick to get the ear out of there. This is what the donkey looks like with only one ear. This is the full nativity set with the figures in a lighter color wax and the animals in a darker color wax. These are our little votive candles. They are bigger at the top than they are at the bottom, so that's why they're splits. One. Two, three, four of candles. One trick is if you're making 
candles in December in Spring City like we are, then you can put the candles outside in the snow and they cool down more quickly than if they're just sitting here on the counter. Here we unmold this big pine cone. Stan pulled out the pin, took off the elastics, and brought it in from the snow for me to pull out. Here's how we unmold the smaller pine cones too. We'll grab this pin with the pliers and set it there. Then we remove the elastics from around the mold and gently pull the mold loose from the sides of the candle and then pull out the candle. I like the pine cone to be dark brown color because that's what color they are in real life. So there's this pine cone, this mold. It's like a medium sized pine cone. Here's the little pine cone. It's cute. We have this really large one, a medium, and a small one. Okay, so first thing we're gonna cut these. I miscalculated the length of string, so we had a little extra there. What do you do with the extra string? Um, Throw it away? Depends on how waxy it is. If it's still usable, I'll use it on another candle. If it's not, then throw it away. Okay, we use that stick to kind of support those wicks so they'd be in the middle. And then this side, we also need to release them. I put hot glue on them, of course, to make it so the wax doesn't pour out after we enlarge the holes. Okay, and so I can either untie the knot. So this, of course, is the bottom of the mold, but it will be the top of the candle. So if I want a long wig, I can untie the knot. If I want a short wick, I can just cut it off. There we go. And then the rest will cut so that I can pull them through. It's time to pull these shorter candles out of their molds. So we cut these and release the glue and got them ready to pull out. And now from the top, the back side of the candle, we can use the pliers to pull these out. Okay, let's do the next one. Oh, shoot, that's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> we'll grab that if we can. Hopefully we can get this one out. No! Okay, that one might be a heat gun or hot water situation. That one came right out. Okay, I'm just gonna run these under hot water really fast because they've been out in the snow. I'll be right back. I just ran these under hot tap water. Hopefully that will do the trick. We'll see if that will help them come out more easily. Oh, okay, so we have this beautiful candle here. Oops, we got a little slum gum right there. That's okay. It'll still work as a candle. Okay. Okay, I'll be right back, more hot water. All right, maybe the third time's a charm. Let's see if we can grab these. Oh, popped right out. Awesome. Hot water along the edge of that did the trick. That one did not go so well. Woo! That one. Let's see, these ones might be. Oh, that one came right out. Awesome. Okay, last one. Let's cross our fingers. Oh. Yes, we got all eight out. That is victory right there. So here's our, our eight amazing tapered candles from this mold. Awesome. Here is what we made in one day of candles. Of course, we had a day of setup before this and we just could work wax all day long. I'll show you. So we have all of these are floating candle molds. So we have peonies, roses, another style of rose, and the bees on the flowers. 
And then we have these floating um, snowflakes, which are so cute. A set of stick candles here. There's eight of them in a mold. Three trees. A set of three stick candles with different textures. Made a bunch of votive candles here. And then here we have two skeps, a candle with leaves, some pine cones, a full nativity set, these last eight shorter tapered candles. Anyway, not bad for a day's work, eh? If you liked this video, be sure to check out our beekeeping courses at thehoneycompany.com. We're offering six full length beekeeping courses for beginning, intermediate, and advanced beekeepers. See you there.